Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to this exhibition match between Electro and Angry Macrophage. I'm Shadow Fury 33, your host, and let's get started. So, first we're watching Electro, he is picking CISO, while Angry Macrophage is also playing CISO. So this is a CISO mirror between these two players, both of which are relatively newer players, well, not newer players, but they don't play as much as some of the other players we've had on the show. However, it should still be very interesting to see what they do. Of course, more experienced players have their strategies, but it's interesting to see what players who don't play as much tend to go for, because, of course, they might have some really good ideas. Oftentimes, you see stagnation being eliminated by new blood. And I'm not entirely saying that Akron's strategies are stagnant, but it is certain that there are a couple things which may be a little bit broken. So, it'll be interesting to see what these players both do, seeing as they're both playing CISO, and for anyone who hasn't really kept up, CISO is right now being debated as possibly the most powerful race in the game. We aren't totally sure about this yet, but they do have a very easy time expanding, which does put them in a distinct advantageous position. We are working on possible solutions for the next patch. I mean, should say the community is. We have, of course, the EXP mod, which has been featured here before, and that has come up with certain ideas. Having played it a bit, it's it nerfs CISO at this point. It nerfs it hard. I will hopefully try to get some casts going. Hopefully we'll get some replays from that. And we'll be able to show you exactly how CISO gets nerfed into the ground. But for now, this is vanilla, and CISO is... is as good as expanding as it is in vanilla 1200. Of course, this is a CISO mirror, so it, it makes no difference. Both players have this advantage, and neither player has actually taken advantage of it at this point. Angry Macrophage at the 152 mark, he is sending out special ops to... Actually, no, he is going to expand towards the north base here. However, sending one marine out there, keeping the other marine in his main base to help saturate. This is in contrast to a lot of players in this map, which tend to expand out... Like and especially will expand out to this base here a lot of the time when playing this map and not really worry about the main base, especially when playing Grekum. Though with CISO... Of course, with multiple marines, you can just send them out everywhere. And that's actually one change in the EXP mod is Special Ops build. Anyway, Electro is using a Special Ops to attack Angry Macrophage's main base at the 427 mark. And Angry Macrophage just checking that out, seeing what's going on there. Not really a big concern. Angry Macrophage hasn't even started to build up that area in the timeline. So whatever happens there is extremely subject to change. Electro, on the other hand, really focused on his early game, getting that all set up nicely. Both of his marines are still in his main base. He hasn't focused on expansion much. Actually, at this point in time, he doesn't have any resources to do any more expansion with. He's just double-checking his start and double-checking his harassment attack as well. I'm not sure why he hasn't built anything further in the past, though. Angry Macrophage, on the other hand, has built up a couple factories around the 24 mark. He has two importers as well, and these importers are... Well, they have the reserves they need. Not building, interestingly, any... Infantry. I mean, he doesn't have his factories coming up quickly enough to actually defend the special ops attack. Mind you, special ops aren't that powerful. His marine has gone to the north base. It is expanding. Anyway, as I was saying, the special ops is the builder instead of the marine in the EXP mod, which changes quite a bit, makes it harder for CISO to hyper expand, but it may have made them a bit too weak along with a couple other little changes. We'll see, however, once I actually get to cast one of those games. Of course, for now, the marines are the builders, just to clarify. Anyway, Electro building up his importer and factory on the 146 mark when he first gets the money to do so. I Maybe he was just really focused on that harassment on the special ops attacking, the scouting, figuring out what's going on there before even starting his main strategy, before starting building anything, figuring out what Anger Macrophage is up to. And Anger Macrophage is, of course, up to factories. He does have his two factories, was building an ATHC, a couple of ATHCs out of them. While he is also trying to defend against the Special Ops, however, Marines cannot really defend against Special Ops. Special Ops are great at killing other infantry, by the way. They're pretty much the most powerful infantry in the game. Grekum, the Grekum base class will stand up to them, but pretty much any other infantry will die in a 1v1 situation with a Special Operative. Another Special Ops coming up for Anger Macrophage. This should be able to win the fight because Electros is weakened. 36 health compared to... Oh! Oh, wow. No, it managed to get lucky, but an ATHC coming out... And finishing it off, another ATHC will be coming shortly, is at the 441 mark. While Electro is at the 231 mark, he has his factory just finishing up and getting his first reserve from the importer. He, like I said, is very focused on this point in time. Not sure exactly what he's planning on doing there. He has no resources to do anything 
at the point in time he's focused on. Probably, okay, now he's figuring out when the factory was done, and from there he will be able to start building units, possibly getting some harassment of his own, counter-harassment maybe. The ATCs are not going to be arriving at his base until at least the five minute mark. Here's one ATC coming in and a special ops as well coming in from Ang Angry Macrophage to Electro. Electro will have to deal with this when he, well, about the six minute mark honestly. This ATC is taking a little while and Angry Macrophage did not focus on harassment or on rushing. So Electro has, well, two minutes from his current position to get there and he's getting machinery good idea he can get tornades with machinery and use that to help detect the ATHCs however he does not have a lot of resource processors on Q plasma and tornades are very Q plasma heavy I'll show in a moment but it's, I believe it's about 95 Q plasma anyway at the six minute mark electro double checks there is an ATHC hitting him right then and of course this is at the four minute mark when his special ops arrives at angry macrophage's base and we already saw what happened there angry macrophage managed to beat it off but very close. I mean, he lost his special ops in the process, so really that special ops actually kind of paid for itself. Being that it's free does help. Electro going for a mech instead. His macro, his well, angry macrophage's attack won't be coming in for like I said, another minute and a half or so, and right here actually, sorry, two minutes. So he doesn't have to worry about detection too quickly. He does have a mech coming up though. I'm not sure if he's going to build a macro fab with that or if he's going to be building. Oh, he's building a turret. Not a bad idea. The, it will detect the ATHC coming in. And I'm, like I said, I'm surprised he didn't get more Q-Plasma earlier in the game. More Q-Plasma resource processors. He has enough money to build more resource processors. And he needs the Q-Plasma. Ah, here we are. He is now building Q-Plasma resource processors. And another liquid crystal resource processor. He is, however, somewhat behind in the economy. As we can see, at this point in time, Angry Macrophage has about let's see three and his three and one in his expansion and six and two in his main base so he has nine liquid crystal and four q plasma resource processors compared to electro's seven and two so electro is falling behind an economy compared to angry macrophage and of course that was a minute and a half ago from where we are now when at the 624 mark Macro angry macrophage has actually only gotten a couple more q plasma rps he hasn't expanded much but he is getting more units Getting more Lancers, as well as CATC coming in. So, dealing quite a bit of damage to Electro. Electro, at the 521 mark, has not set up a lot of units to deal with this. His mech is doing a good job getting rid of the Lancer, but of course, more Lancers coming in. This one is actually the one we saw when we were looking from Angry Magnifage's point of view. And from Electro's point of view, before the Blue Time Wave. So, the Blue Time Wave is carrying along this turret being built, and the ATHC is being built as well. While two ATCs are coming forward from Angry Macrophage at this time, and Electro double checking at. Uh, interesting, double checking the unplayable. the very edge of the unplayable pass, see what's going on. However, now the blue time wave has come along, this battle has changed quite a bit. The turret is now able to destroy the ATHC, and Angry Macrophage's harassment is going to fall quite short. It does not matter though, Angry Macrophage has still built up two macrofabs. He's not building anything with them, he doesn't have machinery yet, but he is able to produce quite a few units, able to produce the entire tech tree once he gets machinery, and obviously ground units as well, but he is able to produce all the units. He does have all the unit production structures at about the seven minute mark. At the six minute mark, however, his ATHCs are coming in still, and Electro, this is of course when his special ops hits and does, oh, wait, oh, looks like he moved his special ops attack point and has actually managed to destroy the two importers that Angry Macrophage has, so Angry Macrophage is going to be in quite a bit of trouble. He has no reserves, he can't build any additional units other than mechs. Of course, his mechs are all he needs to build the macrofabs, but he needs the reserves to build anything from the macrofabs. And now Electro at the 614 mark is moving out. He sees the ATHC, one of his ATHCs is stopping to help fight it, while the turret goes and kills it. The other, another ATHC falling back to destroy the ATHC from Angry Macrophage, which has been destroyed, and a macrofab coming up for Electro. Electro, however, still very low on Q-Plasma. He has quite a bit of Liquid Crystal, but very little Q-Plasma. Not getting a lot of units. I'm very surprised he has not expanded more than he has right now. He is building RPs towards the front base. Essentially the natural expansion, but he does not have any Q-Plasma RPs, just Liquid Crystal. And he really does need Q-Plasma. That is his bottleneck in the moment for production. He can build infantry, he can build mechs, he can't really build much else. Of course, the ATHCs are also low on Q-Plasma, but they aren't free on Q-Plasma. So, Electro very focused on the edge of the unplayable past, while Angry Macrophage focused very near the present, getting Gate Tech. So, he is planning to chronoport back a bunch of units, from the looks of it, he, seeing as he is 
staying resolutely two or th two and a half minutes ahead of his opponent. Looks like he is going for a Chronovore, trying to get himself in a position where he can just Chronovore back units from near the present and basically use that advantage from the future. This probably will work, actually. Electro is not doing a lot of damage at this point. However, he did destroy the importers, and those importers, well, of course, like I said, that's necessary for CISO to build any units other than mechs. And mechs are not going to be very useful as a has a late game pushing army to destroy Electro's base. So Electro, like I said, has expanded. He is also getting a command or communication center. This will help him see what's going on around this base. It'll also allow him to use Smart Idol and Auto Hierarchy, though most of the time players don't use that. We'll see if he does, though. I'm very curious to see if he actually uses those features, because Auto Hierarchy allows units to automatically form hierarchies, which can be useful around the unplayable past edge where Electro has been hanging out since it allows units to essentially rebuild groups. He is, however, turning Smart Idol on, which will cause units to more intelligently help each other out, especially units with healing. I'm not 100% sure how it works with just attacking, though. But if he builds MFBs or Blackbirds, they will be much more intelligent about going towards other units and healing them if they're damaged. Anyway, ATHTs are coming into harass quite effectively at the 830 mark. Though I say quite effectively rather tenuously because, of course, Anger Macrofage has not built anything yet, but he does have Gaytech in the future. However, Martank being rather ineffectual against ATHTs, Martanks are not very powerful against cloaking units. Neither are Zion Pulses for that matter. Cloaking units are the hard counter to artillery. So ATHTs, they are still going to go down, but they aren't going to go down as quickly as they would if, for example, tanks were being used instead. And ground units are also being... Okay, ground units is being researched. That will allow Anger Macrofage to get Twin Mars, which is a very good idea because Twin Mars do not have any damage penalties against cloaking units. They do not have splash damage, however. They are purely single target attacking units. But given that Electro does not have a large army being built, it's not a bad idea. He is getting Martanks of his own back at the 919 mark, so about three minutes down from when we were looking earlier. And the blue time of coming along, carrying along the ATHC harassment. So this ATHC harassment from Electro is doing quite a bit of damage. Anger Macrofage having no detectors and not really being able to take advantage of the gate tech that he had purchased earlier. No mechs to do with, and the ATHCs, wow, the ATHCs did a huge amount of damage. However, a Marine is still out in the top left corner, the northwest corner of the map, for Angry Macrophage, and that will be able to rebuild a base if necessary. Though, Angry Macrophage, he's in a curious position. He's actually not really on the ropes, except for the loss of his base. I know that sounds really bizarre, and he's jumping back to the 943 mark to see what he can do about this. I know it sounds really bizarre, but other than the fact that he has no base in his main base, he's actually not doing too badly. He still has quite a few units, and he has a huge amount of money in the bank. I mean, Electro also, actually, he hasn't spent his money at this point, I should say. Electro hasn't spent a lot of money, but Anger Macrofage has spent a lot of money, and still has quite a bit of money. He has gate tech, he has the ability to rebuild a base, he could actually... But he surrendered! Okay, so Anger Macrofage considers this a loss, and forfeits. Even though, honestly, he probably could have gotten out of this, it would have still been a tough struggle from here. I, I've got to be honest, it would have been hard. The ATHC's obviously doing a lot of damage, but that... Not impossible, just difficult. Really difficult. And Special Ops coming in, trying to detect... I mean, is able to detect, but not able to actually kill the ATHCs in time. So, it looks like Anger Macrophage has lost. And, oh, Electro has actually, Electro has taken the Northwest base as well, so Anger Macrophage and Electro are fighting for the Northwest base. I'm a bit surprised that Anger Macrophage did not go for the Southeast base, since that is much closer to his main. And I'm a bit surprised, he says he has no way to build units, but he, oh, I see, he lost his Marine right here. Yes, in, well, sort of, not really. He can build a mech, build an armory, and then build Marines from there. Which Electro is actually pointing out right now, and Anger Macrophage is well aware of. I'm not sure if Anger Macrophage is aware of the fact that mechs can build importers and armories in order to allow the tech tree not to be completely destroyed if you lose marines. This wasn't something that was in the start of the game, and Anger Macrophage has not played in a while, so he might not be aware of this new feature. It looks like Anger Macrophage is not, however, building mechs, and. Just as a side note, even though he did say GG, this isn't a tournament match, so there's no rule saying if you say GG, you automatically forfeit and therefore lose. So, he could still come back, but no, he is he is definitely going to just call this, say he lost. And that was the game. A um, little bit disappointing at the ending, but interesting to see how new players are playing. 
uh, quite interesting to see how powerful ATC harassment was. Though, like I said, machinery and tornadoes, great counter to this, or just machinery and turrets. I mean, Electra's counter was not bad. When I mean, you consider that was just ATHCs, it was a good idea. So Electro, well done, and Angry Macrophage, remember that mechs can rebuild. And machinery is not a useless tech, it's definitely worth getting. Because he had the advantage, I'm... Yeah, Angry Macrophage had the advantage. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed that, and have a good night, everyone.